Welcome back to the Manor and Tropians. Julian McBain here, and today we are doing migration. And we're going to talk about something called auto suggestion. So, this is a methodology with which you can take all of this advice I take to, or advice I give to exhort you on pursuing your goals and writing down your goals and getting to the place that brings you to success. And. It comes from Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And it uses a principle, the, the, the principle of auto-suggestion is the idea that if you repeat something over and over and over enough, it will make it come true. Global! 84.90. Cool, that kind of makes up for yesterday. Ugh. Oh, it's 36 ped last night. Um, I'm recording this on Saturday, and of course Friday I did a two and a half hour stream hunting these guys. But the idea is, and other authors have mentioned this too, if you write down your goals every day, or if you speak your goals every day, twice a day, you're going to stay focused on the goal and achieve the goal, achievement of the goal becomes far more likely. Now... I, I have to admit, this is not something I am very good at. It's something I need to push myself to do. Uh, but it's something I am definitely going to have to start doing. Like, there was a time when I was going through it just about every day. It wasn't twice a day technically like it should have been. I only spoke them, I didn't write them down. But if you truly want, truly want to achieve something, you have to be able to keep it front of mind. And to keep it front of mind... You have to constantly be reminding yourself of what the goal is. Because you have the capability to achieve whatever it is you set out to do. This is the weirdest... There we go. You know, it's not outside of the realm of possibility for you to achieve great things. I mean, look at Elon Musk. He decided to put a Tesla into space... And now it's playing Rocket Man forever more in orbit between Earth and Mars. He had a goal, he achieved the goal. And that's what it takes. Now, what are you going to achieve, do to achieve the goal? Well, the first thing you need to do is write those goals down. Okay? And then you've got a couple of choices. Choice number one is you repeat the goals verbally twice a day. And full disclosure, I am really bad at this. I am doing this as much to yell at myself to do it as to tell all of you to do it. Repeat the goals twice a day, every day. Saturday and Sunday included. Weekends off don't count anymore, kids. Not if you really want to get where you're going. Oh, cool. I sold some animal muscle oil. Um, so, yeah. Twice a day, every day. What's next? Okay. You have to continue doing this without fail. And then every day you need to choose actions that actually move toward achieving the goal. Auto-suggestion only takes you so far. But by constantly reminding yourself of what you're trying to do, it's going to push you and it's going to keep it front of mind. It's going to make you constantly think about it, right? Because you don't get anywhere if you're not constantly thinking about it. You gotta constantly be thinking about it. It's gonna be the first thing you think of when you wake up. It's gonna be the last thing you think of when you go to bed. Whatever you think of when you wake up and go to bed is the thing that's most important to you. I'm gonna repeat that. Anything you think of when you wake up and go to bed, that last thing that you think of when you go to sleep, that first thing you think of when you wake up, that is the most important thing to you at that moment. And you can force yourself to think of whatever it is you're looking to do with your life. And the way to do that is to constantly be reminding yourself what it is you want to do with your life. And it does take time. It takes a lot of time for you to overcome the built-in roadblocks that we have built for ourselves in our minds. Hmm, almost 20 pad, that's good. You know, this... That's absolutely natural that we do that. And it's like that because society tells us to take it easy. You know, it's socially acceptable to put in a mediocre effort into your life and get mediocre results. 
I think it's probably the biggest harm we have done to ourselves as a society is that we're not pushing people, we're not pushing ourselves to be the best out there. And that's the thing, it's, you know, I come on here and I talk about pushing yourself to be the best and pushing yourself to, to go as far as you can. And I, part of the reason I do it is to push myself to do the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm posting content seven days a week. I work my nine to five job. I do my job as a single father. And that's not, not job in the classical sense, but it's, you know, you still have responsibilities, right? You still have to put the effort for it. You still have to put the work in. Got a lot of pet and ammo back. We're already over 100 pet ammo back. That's awesome. Um, so you have to be willing to make the sacrifices. And me, the sacrifices I make are largely my time. But I'm okay with that because the time I sacrifice now will yield me bigger dividends later. My return on time invested will be much greater than they otherwise might have been. And I accept that that's the sacrifice I need to make. I also accept that I am not perfect. And one of the things that you have to realize as well is you are not perfect. You are going to have hiccups. You're going to have months where you do not make progress. And then you're going to slap yourself and go, oh, I, I was heading in a direction and I lost my way. That's bad. The most important thing is, though, that you realize it. Oh, cool. Once you have figured out you made that misstep, just like I did within the last couple days, you know, don't wallow in it. You know, clear your mind out. Take take a day or two to let your mind clear. Be like, okay, I know I misstepped. I, I, I fell off the track. What do I need to do to get back on the track? And you look at all of the aspects that would put you back on track, and you move your ass back toward the track. And that's what I'm doing now. Because 2020 has been a mess, kids. It's been a mess for everyone. Now, the question is, at the end of 2020, are you going to look back and say, wow, what a waste of a year? Or are you going to look back and say, well, the beginning of the year really sucked, and it was a really rough year overall. But I still made progress. What is it you want to be thinking at the end of the year? Because you can do either one. Right? They both take the same amount of effort, believe it or not. It takes the same amount of effort to do, be mediocre as it does to be exceptional. It's just how you direct those efforts and what you direct those efforts toward. It's not hard, kids. Well, I can't say that. It is hard. It's hard to break out of that mental blockade that you've built around yourself to allow yourself to live a mediocre life. And we all fall victim to it. You know, we should just enjoy the time we have. No. Don't go overboard. You know, time is precious, which it is. Time is absolutely precious. But not in the way most people who say time is precious think of it. I'm going to get into that in just a minute. All of these mediocre thoughts are the things that are holding you back. And it will require you to constantly remind yourself that it takes the same amount of energy to be exceptional as it does to be mediocre. And you become exceptional by constantly reminding yourself of your goals and pursuing actions that take you toward those goals. Now let's talk about why they say time is precious and what time is precious actually means. Because this is really important, I don't go into this very much. When most people say time is precious, they mean you shouldn't be putting so much time in towards your work, and you should spend more time doing the things that are fun. And I understand a certain amount of wisdom to this, but I also think it's the worst piece of advice that you can give a person. I'm serious. Yes, I just basically contradicted myself. There is a certain amount of wisdom into saying that. And it's also the worst piece of advice you can tell a person. Are these long tooth or malt? Nope. Foster Vix is not what I'm looking for. Because... 
it's there's wisdom in it because sometimes you get so caught up in what you're doing you miss something important right that's happened to all of us and so that is fundamentally true sometimes you do need to take a step back and slow down and look at things that's why we have these things called vacations it allows us to gain perspective and enjoy what we're doing more understand and get rewarded for the effort we're putting in and how you break up your vacations is up to you i know some people who take whole weeks off i used to do that i know other people who will if they're going on a business trip they'll um they'll carve out a couple of extra days at the end of it and they'll bring their family with them if the trip allows and after the business part is done they'll just stay where they are for a couple of days and explore things Especially if you're going somewhere fun like New York City or out west in the Badlands. Not that you're going to have a whole lot of business in the Badlands, but you could, it's possible. Uh, you know, go down to Florida, whatever. Or maybe you're going to Ireland or Sweden or China. Build in an extra couple days for your, you and your family to enjoy yourselves, and then you get back to it. It allows you to kind of reset your head. But at the same time, by saying slow down, don't put so much work in, kind of slide it by, let it go, you're also sacrificing your possibility of success in order to get that downtime. You know, a, a great reminder of it for me was just how my whole day today went, right? So... It's a Saturday. Saturdays for me are usually spent doing house chores and yard work. It's a day that I can put my contribution into my household for what I need to do to live here. That includes tending the lawn. Oftentimes it means splitting wood. Oftentimes it means doing some cleanup. You know, basic things that are my contribution to living in my home. And we all have those responsibilities. You can't abandon those responsibilities no matter what. Oh boy, there we go. Now that being said, um, today we had a tropical depression come through. And because of that, it was way too wet to do any outside work. So I did some inside work, but then I wasted most of my day. What could I have been spending this doing during this day? I could have been making content. I've got videos to make for the week. I could have been spending my time doing that. You know? I could have been working on another project. Which I'm not quite ready to publicly announce yet. And it only affects the local area I'm in, but I'll throw it out there just so everyone's aware of it. When it comes time to announce it. It's the... It was... It clicked about the same time I went to go into this conversation. That I was wasting that time. And the reason I had been wasting that time is I stopped doing the important thing, was continuing to auto-suggest to myself... That I need to be working toward my goals. Especially yesterday. Yesterday, I made it over 400 subs. I wake up this morning, I back down to 399. I probably would have made it faster if I had just continuously reminded myself of what my goals were. But I didn't. But you know what? That doesn't mean I quit. That means I reset, recognize the mistakes I made, go back and do the things necessary to make it work better. I'm really curious what all of you might be having in your goals list that maybe you lost track of. Because it is really easy to do. It's absolutely easy to do. And once you do, it's hard to get back on track. But once you do, you're going to feel a lot better about yourself. So here's what I want you to do. Now, this is the call to action part of the video. I'm doing it a bit early. 
because most videos you do the call to action at the very end. But I know most of you only watch my videos for between 10 and 15 minutes, and we're at the 15 minute mark. So before you hang up, before you shut this down, listen to my call to action. My call to action tonight, before you go to bed, I want you to sit down with a notebook and write down your goals. Okay, sit down with a notebook and write down your goals. That was a really good loop. Then, after you've done that, I want you to say them aloud. And I don't care what the goal is. It can be outrageous, it can be outlandish, or it could be really simple. Sit down, write them down, say them out loud. Okay? Sit down, write them down, say them out loud. Then... I want you to close your eyes and think about them for two minutes. I want you to verbalize them again. Then you're allowed to go to bed. Or have your nightcap or whatever it is you do for your evening ritual. What that's going to do is it's going to help to start kickstart your brain into a different mindset. It's going to get the things rolling in your mind. It's going to get them operating at a different level than what you're operating at now and maybe you already do that and that's awesome but i guarantee most of us aren't you know if if i have 400 subscribers i would be surprised if four of us do this regularly But you got to do it. You know, I said it before and I'll say it again. Video gamers are the largest fountain of untapped potential. Can't even talk today. Gamers are the largest fountain of untapped potential in the world. We put all of our effort into the game. And I'm not bitching about this. I do the same thing. Of course, I'm doing other things with it, as you can see by this video. But that doesn't mean that's for everyone. It doesn't have to be for everyone. It's not supposed to be for everyone. But what you can do is say, I put all of this effort into the game. What else can I put an equal amount of effort into that will make me as successful as I am when I'm in the game? And see, see how that changes things? Because I guarantee when you're in a game, you put max effort into that game. It's not hard to put max effort into a game. Do you put max effort into your job? Do you put max effort into your kids? Into your spouse? Or your significant other? Some people can say yes to all those. Or even one or two of them. But not all of us. And this is why a lot of the old stereotypes about the gamer in their ba their parents' basement came about. Because the only thing we're putting effort into is the game. And we'll, we max out the effort on the game. To our credit, we can 10x that. We can definitely max out and super max our effort when it comes to games. But all that tells us is that we're capable of putting that level of effort into something. We're not choosing to put it into anything other than the game. That doesn't help us. It doesn't solve anything. What problems do you have in your life that would make your life go a hell of a lot easier if you could solve them? Why aren't you putting the same level of effort into solving those problems as you do into your game? It doesn't have to take away from the game. You still gotta go to work for eight hours a day. Why aren't you putting the same amount of effort into your job as you do into the game? It doesn't even take a whole lot of extra energy. In fact, I dare say that after a few, after the first couple of times, it doesn't take any extra effort or any any extra energy. And over the long term, you're going to become so efficient at things because you've always put so much energy into it that it's going to take less energy. Because you're not going to drag when you get there. You're not going to feel depressed. You're not going to feel bad about your job. You're not going to feel bad about yourself. You're going to feel good about them. And that produces energy. Now, am I saying this is going to happen overnight? No. Anyone who tries to tell you there's a quick fix to anything is just trying to sell you something. But, 
if you mentally tell yourself you're going to try. And you do it every single day. And every time you start to slip, you're like, no, I'm going to put more energy into it. And every time it gets harder, it's, no, I am going to put more energy into it. I'm going to put more energy into it. And you pour that thought process on. You're auto-suggesting. You're forcing yourself to, su you're suggesting to yourself that you're going to make it. You will eventually make it, I promise you. That's how I was successful in retail. That's how I was successful in grocery. Okay? Grocery is one of the hardest jobs you can have in America today. And it's not because it requires a huge amount of skill. It's not because it's dangerous or anything like that. It's because it is a grind. And most people don't want to be there, which is depressing. But you can make something out of it by putting maximum effort into it. Maximum energy. By constantly reminding yourself. Build in that auto-suggestion. Anytime you start to drag, as you continue to repeat things, as what, anytime you start to drag, your brain's going to instantly snap forward and go, Nope, this is the way it is. This is what we're heading for. This is what we want to do. And your brain will start to extort you. Not extort, exhort you. To do the things necessary to increase the amount of energy that you're putting in or the amount of effort that you're putting into the thing that you're doing that will make you successful. That's what it takes. You know, I think that YouTube channels are a perfect allegory for this. Because you can see that I'm doing the work, right? You can see that I'm here, I'm hunting, I'm producing the content, I'm giving you commentary. My Entropia Universe commentary has turned more to, um, well, for lack of a better term, motivational lectures. But y'all seem to like it, so I'm not going to argue with it. I'm glad to see it. But the more effort I put in, the less energy it ends up taking overall. It just has become part of my life. I've built it into my routine. And like this week, I kind of slipped. I didn't do my Saturday video during the week like I normally do. Instead, I did it Saturday morning. And I still think overall the video went well. Is that the way you should be doing it? No. Actually, kind of a dumb way to do it. Because if I wanted it out on time, I couldn't make a mistake. And you know, Napoleon Hill suggests that you do things in a way where you have to burn your bridge. You burn all bridges and you don't allow yourself to come back. Um, why is it my morning video didn't post? No, it's public. Huh. People are seeing it. Okay. Log into studio and it looks like it's not a... Uh, my Fallout 76 video didn't post, but it did. It's just that for some reason my live stream from last night is overriding it. Oh, someone disliked my live... Oh, no, it was a McBain moment. Okay. Ugh. Someone disliked my McBain moment. Oh, well. Um, But you're not here for a channel rundown. I put the extra effort forth, and it took me a while to get used to it. Sometimes I still slip. And the irony is I'm going to have to continue to put more effort forth for this project I'm coming down to. But it doesn't matter. What's important is that the effort is well spent. The energy is well spent. We are working toward the goal. We are going to make it to the goal. We are going to succeed. And if I can do it, you can do it. Because boy, oh howdy, have I made some serious screw-ups in my life. So, just keep that in mind. Okay, we're going to head back now.
Okay, we made some ground back. That's good. Now we're still in the ammo department. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. As always, everyone, I really appreciate the support, and we will see you in the next one. Let's see if I can't land the sucker proper. Like, I haven't flown a plane in a long time. Let's see if I can't land the sucker pro good and proper. Good and proper. Good and proper. Oh, I made it. Whoa, no, 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 no. Okay. That's all I got. Have a good one.